Hey ladies and gents, in today's episode, uh, we're going to take this fender off. And the reason is because <clears throat> somebody, well, Don Waller and his crew had already, um, re you know, they, they'd already removed the front end, I guess, to get the motor and the transmission out because he always stored, uh, you know, the engine and trannies out of all the classic cars he had in a separate building. Um, so that's probably why this was taken off. So there isn't much holding it in place. Uh, and I'm gonna do this before I reassemble the, the front grill section, simply because um, this fender skirt right here is not fastened. See, uh, the whole fender is loose. And I need to find out if they broke the bolt off in there. If they do, if they did, then, you know, I got to address that. So uh, here we go. All right, now. Notice the <laughs> fender drops down pretty dramatically when I take those out. There's not uh, much of anything holding it in. Now, undo these ones, and there's one uh, right here where I reattached it to the inner fender. And, all right, take these off. These come out very easily, by the way. Remember in a uh, uh, previous episode where I put um, anti-seize lubricant on them. After, after cleaning, you know, the, the nuts and the bolts with, uh, you know, a tap and die. Now this one down here. Here. Alrighty. Yeah, so there wasn't much to that. Voila. It comes off. I'm going to um, take it over to the bench. So what we're looking at here is uh, the mount point for the fender skirt and it really it's really not as bad as I was expecting there's literally no rust here other than surface rust so it's not rotted out and uh, it looks like they just uh, cut the bolt off so what we've got here is the uh, the sheet metal nut assembly which I'm removing as you can see there it is and uh, that's trashed and the uh, a little piece of the bolt should be in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So now let's look at the fender skirt. Uh, it's really not anywhere near as bad as I thought it might be. Um, see, this is all, all really solid. And there's a little bit of rust through right there because there's you know, rust on the face side, which you know is a, a pretty small area. We're talking maybe like three inches in diameter. And uh, if you take a look at this side, you can see that it's pretty solid there too. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, take the inner fender skirt off and <clears throat> clean up, refresh the, uh, uh, you know, the sheet metal nuts and the, and, and the bolts and stuff. Um, and then, you know, get it ready to put back on the car. And then I'm going to do the other side. So here it goes. Now, just like I do everywhere else, uh, I want to clean up the threads on any of the bolts that I can get to, um, you know, hopefully, you know, and lubricate them and hopefully uh, I get them out of there without them breaking or, you know, the, the sheet metal nut breaking loose and just spinning. So I'm using a small, <clears throat> a small diameter wire wheel because it might allow me to get you know, in behind, in behind some of these uh, exposed bolts. There's a couple at the very top over here uh, that I'm probably not going to be able to get to. So I'm just taking my chances with those. So here it goes. And I continue. So I managed to get uh, all the fasteners out. Some, some broke. Some didn't. Oh well. And 
Now the inner fender just comes right off. And we've got the fender to work on. So what's going on with the fender is it still has, uh, still has some nice SS trim on it. So I'm gonna remove that. Um, mostly just to clean up these uh, clean up these fasteners. I'm not so sure I'm gonna put it back on, but I might. And uh, <clears throat> so the um, some of the cage nuts, sheet metal nuts, whatever we want to call them, uh, the the nuts started spinning. So some of them broke off. Um, I managed to save the the bolts though. Pliers were or vice grips worked to to grab a hold of the nut in some case, but there was no way I was going to get you know vice grips up inside here with the inner fender still on there. And here again, just like everywhere else. Um, I clean up these threads with the wire brush and then, you know, and then lubricate them. There's a few of them all the way down. I'll do all of them uh, and then get that trim off. Those all came off relatively easy. They're just the, you know, the, uh, the stamped sheet metal nut. Uh, use a, you know, like a 3 8 uh, deep socket to get them off. There's a little bit of a stud sticking out there, so the shallow socket wasn't quite getting it. Uh, but anyways, I've got them all off, and now <clears throat> the molding should just uh, come off. Voila. All right. So I can put that in a, you know, in a safe place where it won't get scratched up, and then uh, uh, you know, put it on when the time comes. Now, one thing worth noting is uh, these clips for the fender trim have a little metal um, uh -huh, arm on them, I guess you could call it. Um, most of them broke off, you know, when I was uh, removing the nuts. So uh, just for reference, if you take a look at, you know, if you take a look at how that fits in there, um, this, this little leg right here is, is more so just to hold it in place, but that's how they go in. Now I suppose I should cover this too. Uh, looking at these, this you know this one of course is uh, still in good shape. This is actually a spring of sorts. So if you pull that out like this, then that would allow you to turn it and remove this. So just the opposite installing it would simply be like that, and that's it, done. Now for the sake of uh, uh, you know, storage and identification. Uh, just put those clips and the little sheet metal nuts in a, in a baggie, 64 Impala driver's fender, zip it up for storage. And then I'm gonna take um, this trim and just put some of that low adhesion uh, painter's tape over it all the way down and then slide it into some PVC tubing I have for storage, you know, some like three or four inch PVC tubing where I can slide it all in there for safekeeping. Here's something I was, I've always found, you know, to be <clears throat> a bit challenging to get out is there's a rubber mud guard that fits in here and it's from the factory, it's stapled in. You can see, well, they're hard to see on this side, but <clears throat> say like on this side, for example, you can see the, you know, the back side of the staple right there. and. I don't know about you, but I want to get them out of there. Um, so what I do is I just take a uh, you know, good, strong pair of needle nose pliers, and um, you got to straighten the um, straighten the, the bent hook on these. And some of them just break off. Well, that makes life a little easier. So some of them, some of them aren't so brittle though, and they straighten out like this one did. So you can see that one right there. So now what I'm gonna do, put the camera back down. Um, I'm gonna take the, uh, take a screwdriver, a bit of a thin one at first, and slide it under, give it a pry, until I got a little more room, go for, a larger flat blade to get under it and give it a twist and 
it starts to, starts to come out. In this case, I might have to use the um, using those pliers to pulling it out. And there we go. That's what's left of it. <laughs> now I've scraped out <clears throat> some of the dried mud that was in places, um, so you know it's a lot cleaner. Um, there's still there's still uh, you know a rust hole here, right there. But I'm going to address that you know when I take it apart um, to do a lot of the sheet metal work. Right now I'm just concerned with um, getting all the fasteners. Uh, cleaned up and getting it so that I can you know I can check the alignment on on that front end I want to make sure that because of the accident is not not going to be a serious issue I don't want to you know I don't want to finish the whole car and uh, discover that you know it's got it's got problems so what I'm going to do now is put the uh, inner fender back in and uh, then I'll go work on the, uh, the passenger side. All right, now, so just for the record, um, I just wanted to show that <clears throat> this, this fastener that was right here, of course it had, you know, a really big washer on it, but it was, the, the fastener was actually uh, a 3 8 um, cage nut, J nut, whatever you want to call it. And um, so that's a bit different from the ones that are typically used everywhere else on the car. So that's 3 8 coarse. So I'm moving along on uh, the passenger side fender and uh, I actually remembered to bring my tap set. Um, I've got, uh, this, is, this is actually really cool. It's, um, it's actually a, a, a ratchet, uh, kind of like a, you know, uh, uh, like a ratchet and, and wrench kind of thing, ratchet and socket. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's reversible. So what I can do is just clean the threads and then back it out. And uh, it's pretty cool. You know, the, the whole set I bought from uh, Home Depot, it's a Husky set. So it uh, uh, saves me a lot of time. There's nothing more clumsy than having to work with those old, uh, those old ones that had a T-handle through here. In fact, this one's got a, you know, if you're old school and you, you really insist on using the T-handle, <laughs> you can. But why, why bother, right? Next weekend, uh, we're going to be moving on to assembly, and I ordered some new um, some new fasteners all around, um, so you know I can put those on too, and uh, we'll keep going at it. Hey, happy Saturday, everyone! So <clears throat> before I do. Uh, a final alignment assembly. I know up to this point I've taken you through, you know, removing all the fasteners so that, you know, they're, they, they work easy. Um, I'm going to uh, add a few more fasteners from, you know, the, the fastener kit that I got from Parts Geek. Um, so let's have a look at that. And uh, I'm, now I'm, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use all the, the new fasteners I'm only going to supplement the ones that I've lost in the process, you know, where they were rusted out, I had to cut some off, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm only going to supplement for the ones that I need right now because I don't want to, before the parts are finished, uh, you know, I don't want to put my nice new fasteners on, you know, with the, um, you know, with the nice finished coating on them. Uh, until the parts are, are you know, completely fin refinished, painted, et cetera, et cetera, then I'll put the new ones on. But for the time being, I'm only supplementing. So let's have a look. So here's what we have. Um, it came in a box, you know, like this, you know, Ziploc uh, baggie so that, you know, if you don't use them all, you can save them. Um, so anyways, what we got is, it came with a, a whole bunch of stuff. I think it was 200 and some pieces. So we got, you know, shims uh, for the, you know, the alignment. Um, and then, you know, fender washers. Um, these would be for the, I guess they're for the license plate panel. And new screws here. There's a few of these. I think three of them are intended for the, um, 
uh, the, the radiator overflow uh, container to hold it to the, the radiator support, core support, whatever you want to call it. And then, so here's the factory, uh, factory 516 coarse bolts that are the most popular one on the 64 Impala. Now keep in mind that this kit was a, a somewhat universal kit. It was meant to cover a few years. So there's some stuff in here that, you know, I might not use. <clears throat> For example, these ones with the fixed, uh, fixed washer on the head. Um, you know, I haven't seen those yet, at least not on the front end. So they may be useful somewhere else. So the ones that I do see that compare to the factory ones have a slightly bigger washer on them. Um, but they're the same, effectively the same bolt length is just a hair longer maybe an eighth of an inch uh, and the washer is just slightly larger so they're a, a good candidate now these things the j-clips over the years i've uh <laughs> i've taken quite a few 64 impalas apart you know stripped them for parts i used to sell parts but uh so i've seen a few different types now this there's this one and then there's another one that is a little bit wider and it only has like half the J down here. It's cut off right about there. There's that one that I've seen. And then there's the other one that uh, we found on, you know, all the, uh, all the parts that I've worked on so far. And I'll, I'll, I'll grab one of those and show you. And there's this one here. This was the most, most common one. And I think the differences uh, between them is that, uh, it kind of depends on who their supplier was at the time that they were assembling the cars because uh, like I said I've seen I've actually seen three dif three different types over the years so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oh come on don't, don't let me forget this one so this one is larger this is a 3 8 and it comes with two different lengths of 3 8 bolts now this one's gonna work in two different places it's gonna work on the uh, the lower fender skirt um, you know, and you can shim that as well. Uh, and then there's one that's a little bit shorter, as you can see, which is uh, probably going to be where the, the fender fastens to the cowl. So there's that. And let's see, am I missing anything? There's a few of these, uh, these screws, which look like uh, trim screws, possibly for eyebrow moldings, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and the other, I don't see... The ones I don't see were the ones that were used on the um, uh, the, the the side shroud on the on the grill section. I don't see those in here, um, so I may have to resort to something else. I'm not sure. I've got enough of the factory ones if I'm I'm, if I'm stuck on the factory ones, um, but I may have to figure them out, find them from you know some other some other supplier. So let me get started on this. Now, talking about some of the things that uh, you don't get in this kit, so I noticed that uh, you don't get these bolts here, nor the, the J-nuts that go in the back. Um, there's a better example right there. Um, and you don't get the big dishwashers that go under the inner fender. I'll show you those. So it's possible that you get these with uh, another kit. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look around. All right, so now we begin. So. It's going to be the, the 516 coarse J-nut, and I'm just going to stick it on right here. These ones slide on fairly easily. I've got uh, one more over here to do. And uh, get that one in place. These ones go in fairly easy. And, you know, just like the other ones, they've got a little half moon uh, retainer on them to, to hold them in place. Where it's, let's see, let me show you one, see if we can see this. You'll see there's uh, like a half moon uh, cut out on this hole right here, and it's pressed in as sort of like a spring. And when you slide it on, it, uh, it, it clips the thing into the, into the hole right there. Now the brace, um, this brace goes from the, you know, the front fender skirt to the, uh, uh, to the inner uh, wheel well. Now keep in mind that there, there's also uh, you know that other panel that goes in right here. So 
um, this isn't going to be permanent. But anyways, this this bottom one was originally uh, a, a nut and bolt. It, w it wasn't using a J clip. So all I, what I can do is just use one of these bolts, and I've got you know a stainless nut and washer, five sixteenths coarse. Um, So, and then up here, of course, let's go ahead and put, put that in place. Now, I'm going to, um, one thing I, I, I forgot to cover is that, uh, you know, I'm going to put the anti-seize compound on, on these threads. So before I get too carried away, just take, uh, doesn't take much, just a little spot like that. And when you screw it in, it'll spread it around inside the inside the nut. Okay, so let's take it out, and I'll show you how it's spread it around. There you go. See, it's spread it pretty much around the circumference. And put her back in. So these are a little bit, um, a little bit of a wobbly feel to them when they go together on these. Uh, I'm going to call them pressed J nuts. They don't seem to be as uh, um, stable as uh, the other factory ones that I showed you earlier. But you know, uh, who am I to criticize when GM used them, right? Now let's take a look on the. I'm going to take you over to the car next, but this is the three eighths, and this one was meant to go uh, in behind here on the car, so that you know, you can, of course, you can put the three eighths bolt in the and the big washer on there. And it may require shimming, it may not, but at this point, uh, I'm just gonna take care of the fasteners when it comes time to do the, the alignments, um, you know, and the spacing, the gap spacing, uh, then I may have to shim it. But let's go over to the car. So here's where this one's gonna go. Right here where, it, you know, of course, where the, the fender skirt comes around under here, front of the rocker panel, cowl side panel up here. Anyway, so, this is the one we're going to use in there. It's the 3 8 and uh, you know, slide it in, and it's floating, of course. You know, so the you know you can move the fender in and out to get get the alignment right. So I'm probably going to use the the longer of the two right here because I can't be sure you know what kind of uh, shimming I'm going to need to do. So this is the one that's going to going to go in there and I'll put some um, anti-seize on it. Now here's the difference between um, the factory J-clip and this one. Uh, this one actually had a hex nut embedded in it and you know this was the uh, the clip that was in there and of course you know here's what's left of the bolt. Um, but like I said over the years I've stripped uh, you know a, a, a lot of these cars and uh, you, you never can never quite be exactly sure which type of um, you know J clip fastener is in them because it probably has a lot to do with who their suppliers were and what the supplies were that were available at the time of assembly. All right, so now uh, where the fender fastens to the cowl side panel, of course, is another three uh, coarse bolt, and uh, uh, you know the threads in this, of course, are in good shape. Um, one of the things I noticed is that when they assembled the car, the doors might not have, might not have been on here, uh, or they worked with you know the door uh, being open. But notice how the um, the clean spot where the shim went, the shim actually went this way. Now that must have been interesting. So they probably had a finger under it to hold it up while the fender was going in. I would have probably you know, put it in this way, but, you know, I wasn't at the factory, so don't know that I can comment. So, uh, that's another, another fastening point back here where it can be shimmed. Um, another point too, and I still have the, the factory bolts where it was shimmed. Now I have these full size shims, um, and you know, these were the factory bolts. So, so we're good there. So now, time to bring the fender over, I think. 
other thing that uh, I wanted to mention earlier but didn't was that I took, I took the side trim off for a reason because if I'm going to be doing this work, I don't want to damage it. So let's just stick it up here. This side is <laughs> a lot easier than um, the passenger side because on the passenger side you've got the uh, you know the, the the heater core and fan assembly in there that you know get in your way. Okay, there we go. There we have the other one underneath. Yeah, we do. Okay, now I can start pu start uh, putting these fasteners in. Now before I get uh, too far into this, I'm going to put uh, put these two bolts in. Now, one of the things uh, about this is, you know, it's in a bit of a compromising position. Best way to do these is from, you know, from underneath the car. And I'm not going to tighten everything that I'm doing so far because I'm still working on alignments. So I really want to get, you know, all my uh, all my fasteners in. Get the whole end on. Get all my fasteners in before I start messing with that and uh, so now put these in place all right so we'll get a shot of this um, I found that it's a lot easier to do the top one first uh, because it's in such a tight space so that's what I did and uh, I struggled with Struggled with it at first because I did the bottom one first and realized that okay with that tight space up top there It's it's difficult to get it lined up properly uh, with my big fat fingers <laughs> So that's what I did All right, so this closes out the uh, uh, The the grill radiator support and fender uh, repairs to take care of the alignment um, I can finish I can finish you know, assembling all this to make sure all the alignment is really good and then I would take it apart again to do the refinishing so always take care of your you know your alignment and metalwork problems first so here we go we've got driver's side stuck the filler panel in there just to just for demonstration and uh, we're good on this this side too <laughs> 